Hi everyone, I uh, hope things are all going very well. Uh, thanks for the foreign organizers. Uh, I very much appreciate having this opportunity to discuss some uh, as a cultural robotics research that my group has been working on for the past many years. Uh, you know, my name is Jin Jin Xu, and currently I'm a professor in the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering at UCF. Uh, my lab's name is uh, Autonomous Robots and uh, Control uh, Laboratory. I was a short time arc lab. <laughs> uh, first, I would like to give a little bit introduction of myself and uh, what I'm doing here at the UCF. Uh, I'm running an arc lab. Uh, in MAE department at UCF. And my research interest is in the general area of uh, dynamics and carbon systems, uh, ground robotics, UAVs, uh, both fixed wing and uh, rotary wings. Um, we do have some quad rotors and off rotors. Uh, also, we're working on a guidance navigation control series. Uh, I joined UCF in 2008 as assistant professor and was later promoted to full professor in 2018. Um, I mainly teach uh, uh, aerospace engineering core courses, such as mechan uh, flying mechanics, orbital mechanics. I also have been teaching, you know, course in dynamics, owner, uh, feedback control once for undergraduate students. Uh, the graduate courses I've taught, including, you know, guidance navigation control, uh, advanced flying mechanics for several times, and a few times of uh, advanced uh, astrodynamics and systems, and control for once. Uh, for many years, I was heavily involved in senior design courses, uh, not recent a couple of years though. Um, and uh, I'm currently a social fellow for AIA and a member of SME. Uh, I think the things, the biggest achievement I feel, you know, is to support and supervise students to graduate. Uh, up to 2020, I have uh, about 10 or 11 PhD students and uh, 20 master's students graduate from my lab. <laughs> Well, you know, my research group has been working on different research topics, uh, but in today's talk, uh, I'm only going to focus on three uh, agricultural robotic related research, uh, over which, over which uh, I'm the PI. Um, the first project start from, uh, started in 2013, uh, funded by USDA uh, NIFA uh, through the NSF uh, National uh, Robotic Initiative Program. Uh, this project mainly, uh, mainly, uh, mainly investigates how UAVs and ground robots can work together and conduct field scouting and early disease stress detection for uh, tree crops. Uh, this is a collaboration between my group and Dr. Hisami. Uh, at the UF, later on, he moved to UC Merced. The second project, a smaller one, started in January 19, uh, 2019 and funded by Florida Department of Agriculture and the Consumer Service. Uh, my lab is designing uh, a new end effector uh, for harvesting, and I have two collaborators from uh, UF, which will discuss a little more detail uh, in the talk today. The third project is a new uh, uh, national robotic initiative project started in September 2019, um, uh, which, uh, which is funded by NSF. Um, my collaborator is also involved uh, Dr. Sonia at UC Merced and also Dr. Uh, Manoji Kaki at the uh, 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 which, uh, no, uh, Washington State University. Uh, my group research is focused on uh, multiple robotics, how they're scheduling their you know, harvesting operations. Uh, but I think it's uh, worth to note that uh, in addition to these three uh, agriculture related projects, which I'm PI, also I'm involved in uh, maybe one, a few uh, agriculture related projects as a co PIs uh, over the past uh, several years. Uh, so this slide show my uh, first uh, robotic project in agriculture. You know, the motivation is, you know, currently disease and stress detection is mainly done by human inspection. Uh, this operation is conducted a few times throughout the season, uh, which is time consuming, uh, labor intensive, and uh, also easy to have human errors. It's not easy to repeat. And then we propose and develop, uh, you know, study system with Octorotor, uh, you can see here. Let me show some video here. And then ground robots, which, uh, uh, which uh, use uh, ground robots, auto-roto, you know, for fast, uh, basically auto-roto for fast inspection and the ground robots for uh, detailed inspection. As you can see that in the video, you know, the UAVs will fly over field and the sensors on board will collect the uh, suspected leaf areas and then algorithms will be, will be used to uh, track and associate the suspect areas and their geolocations. So later on, we can do more 
uh, detailed inspection. Uh, all this suspected area will be coordinated and then sent to the uh, ground scouting robot, which, is go which will then go there, take a very close look at uh, the area and make sure if there's any problems or not. And my research group has been focused on uh, design and develop Octorotal uh, from scratch and also ground scouting robots from scratch. Uh, we have been uh, working on this robot since 2013 and that has been going on. Uh, right now, we are still enhancing its motion ability in uh, real field conditions. Um, the field robot motion uh, guidance control is not an easy task, and as many of us thought initially, the sandy road conditions in Florida is a big challenge to us. Um, when the robot finishes one row, it will automatically impact the cross path motion to the next row uh, with only vision systems you know, to be used um, to align with the next row. Uh, we didn't use GPS or LIDAR for many reasons. Uh, the good thing is that we have a very good uh, nearby farm close to UCF. We have been there many times to test our robot platform. Um, my collaborator, you know, at the, U at the UC Merced is working on spectrometer for early disease detection analysis stuff. So. Uh, my second project uh, I'm going to talk today is the ND factor design. Uh, this is a two and a half year project um, from uh, State uh, Department of Agriculture. Uh, we are only working on subsystems, so it's not overall harvesting operation. It's basically only one part of the harvesting platform, which is end factor. Uh, there are many types of end factor and gripper designs, and uh, we focus on the three finger configuration. Uh, the end factor basically scoops on the bottom of the, of the fruits, so it will not damage the fruits when it's, uh, when it's harvested. Um, the nice thing about this design is that it will not damage the picked fruits and will always push the fruits to the middle of the holding compartment. And sometimes it can pick more than one uh, if they are not too big. Uh, I have two collaborators uh, at UF. Uh, Dr. Ajahara is helping us with the post harvesting analysis, and Dr. Grant is helping us to uh, analyze it economic wise, uh, you know, if it's uh, effective to have this kind of grip or any factor. Uh, here's a video we show here is uh, the lab experiment. Um, oh, back. The, the lab, uh, the first experiment is sure that we can follow a red color Lego piece and uh, the camera in hand will be able to, uh, will able to uh, detect the strawberry stuff inside which here we are represented by a red block. And uh, the field experiment on the right shows the video of the gripper that uh, you know following certain paths and then find the uh, strawberry, which is a mature one. Once it is found, the finger will come down and scoop from bottom. And you can see from the video, it, it find one and then drop to some box somewhere. Um, so this XY table will move the gripper to the location and then drop properly. Uh, this is a subsistence design and we still have some issues here uh, we are working on uh, for the past year and continue now. Um, the last project is, uh, is our second uh, uh, national robotics project funded by NSF. Um, the, you know, the cost in harvesting is a major uh, cost in strawberry production. And uh, the cost of the, the strawberry, you can see that it has been instead increased several years ago. Uh, main reason is labor shortage and labor uh, cost increase. Uh, basically, there are not enough uh, human pickers you know, for, uh, to pick in strawberries nowadays. Uh, I have two collaborators. Uh, uh, the collaborator of the UC Merced is working on a new arm design, which we don't show in the picture. And uh, uh, our another collaborator is working on the image uh, processing algorithm to detect the uh, you know, leaf, stem, and fruits, which I'm not shown in this slide as well. My research is working on the motion control and scheduling issue of the multiple robots. You can see the uh, you know, up right corner, they have several robots working together, and we try to design new algorithm to schedule them. Um, also, we are working on many engineering stuff, working on it, like motion control robotic design. Uh, the new robotic design is shown on the corner here, is a different from the current one we have. Uh, in the meantime, we have uh, uh, undergrad students uh, help us uh, design a uh, graphical user interface shown on the uh, left, uh, uh, right bottom uh, part, um, uh, which is a pretty good uh, status right now for the GUI part. Uh, for the new robotic platform, we are enhancing our motion ability of algorithm. I think the media, our new image guided controller is developed. And now the success, success rate of uh, crossing the bed motion control is about 100%. Uh, 
So we run many, many tests every year and uh, almost 100% uh, trials right now are, are successful. And it works for different light conditions. Uh, there are some color markers you can see on, in the field and uh, temper put there to guide the uh, vision, to guide the robot using the vision system on it. Um, our crossband motion is separate into three phases involving both open loop controllers and uh, closed loop controls, controllers. And uh, one thing we didn't show on the slides is uh, our, we are focusing on new scheduling algorithm so that you know, the overall uh, harvest time will be minimized. And, but in the meantime, we try to maximize the return for each for individual robots are working there, try to mimic how human is doing in the field. Uh, uh, the project just gets started, I think it's about one, a little bit one, uh, one half years ago. Um, uh, the progress is fine, it's smooth. We are still uh, improving uh, the result. The last slide I have is basically summarized. Uh, currently my short-term goal for the project is to make sure that our robot can be fully autonomous. Uh, we're still working on that. I can reliably operate in agriculture fields. My long-term goal is, uh, you know, as a professor, we want to train more and more students and higher quality students, uh, undergrad students, PhD and master's students, they can, so they can be successful in, in their career. Uh, I do have other research directions, however, for my agricultural part research, I'm looking for collaborators in sensor development uh, for different types of crops, uh, for example, disease detection, stress detection, uh, nutrient deficiency detection, uh, yield prediction, etc. Uh, you know, all these sensor technology are crucial for our uh, precision agriculture. Also, I like to have collaborators in AI, machine learning, robotics, um, you know, uh, agricultural scientists, and agricultural engineering as well. Uh, also, of course, you know, uh, economics-wise, we need some uh, people to help us uh, analyze uh, economics in terms and other things. Um, so now I'd like to thank my sponsors for the research, uh, including uh, NSF, USD, and NIFA and the uh, Florida Department of uh, um, Agricultural Commercial Service at BAC. Uh, finally, without collaborators and students, we cannot uh, make progress in this project. We have many graduates working in this project. I didn't list them name here. And also we have many, many undergraduate students, uh, senior design team helped, maybe six or seven teams have been helped over the years. Uh, they helped all the designs and constructions and uh, including the ground one and also the uh, flying one. Um, probably without all these senior design students' help, we probably don't have any hardware platform to demonstrate in the field. Uh, there are basically many of them. Uh, I didn't list their name. I'd like to thank all of them in this talk. Uh, lastly, I'll, uh, I think we are very fortunate to have a practice patch farm, which is a youth farm very close to us. We, they always provide us access to the farm uh, to, testing, uh, to test our uh, platform for many years. Uh, finally, uh, I'd like to thank uh, uh, all the support from the department, college, and the university. And uh, I think that's all for my talk uh, today. Thank you.